Today, I'm gonna to go through a live bookkeeping tutorial for small businesses. This is gonna give you the basics of everything you need in order to get started with your own bookkeeping and accounting systems. I'm gonna go through this step-by-step step so that you can follow along even if you are a beginner with no experience. Now, this is a follow-up to my video on bookkeeping and accounting basics, and now I am giving you the exact implementation steps. All right, so I'm on my computer now, and as you can see, I am on quickbooks.com. QuickBooks is the software that I recommend for all my US-based small business clients because it has virtually everything you need in order to manage your own bookkeeping and accounting. So let's talk about how to set up an account. First, let's look at our plans and pricing. As you can see right now, they have 50% off the first three months. I'll also have a link down in the description below for a discount as well that may be a little bit better than that. So there are four plans to choose from, Simple Start, Essentials Plus, and Advanced. All of the plans have income and expense tracking, bookkeeping automation, invoicing and payments, receipt capture, cash flow management, and a lot more features as you can see. Now for most of my small business clients, starting with just the Simple Start is absolutely fine. Sometimes my clients may need an Essentials account if they have a bigger team or they have partners because with the Essentials account, you're able to add more users. So if you have partners or a bookkeeper or just anyone else on your team that is maybe handling invoices or accounts receivables and account payables, then you would want the Essentials plan. The plus and advanced plans aren't really necessary for your average small business. Next, you have the option to add payroll. Now, if you're paying yourself a W-2 salary or you have W-2 employees, then you're gonna want the payroll features. Now, there are three plans to choose from here. I like the payroll elite because QuickBooks will basically handle all your payroll functions. And if QuickBooks makes a mistake, which sometimes they do, there's this tax penalty protection, which means they'll pay and cover any estimated tax penalties or any state payroll tax penalties that they did not make on time on your behalf. So that is something that I love. As you can see, they cover up to $25,000 in potential penalties if they make a mistake. So I like the payroll elite plan from there. As you can see, your monthly bill is about $104 a month. And from there you will sign up and you'll have your first bookkeeping and accounting system ready to go. Now remember your bill may be a little bit lower if you don't need payroll, but if you have W-2 employees or if you do pay yourself a reasonable salary as an S corporation, you're gonna wanna have the payroll account. All right, now let's talk about how to set up once you have an account. Oh yeah, one other thing I wanna show you, if you are an accountant or you're looking to start up your own bookkeeping business, then you're gonna to wanna to sign up as an accountant or a firm user on QuickBooks Online because that's gonna allow you to manage your own clients from one account. And when you do that, it looks something like this. So this is my firm account and then I'll have different sub accounts that I can switch to with my bookkeeping firm. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's move into an individual account. All right, now once you have an account, you're gonna log into your dashboard first. Now, depending on what you have set up and what's going on, your dashboard may look a little different. As a new account owner, you're likely gonna see some setup instructions, but here I have a sample company showing which shows some different tasks that are overdue and so on. Typically when I log into a QuickBooks account, it's gonna highlight some of the bank accounts I have already connected along with maybe some cash flow statements of cash in and out. All right, now when you log into your account, the first thing I want you to do is go to transactions and set up your chart of accounts. Okay, your chart of accounts are like your structure for all your financial transactions, okay? This is where you're gonna set up what is gonna be an asset, what is gonna be a liability, what is an expense, what is considered income, and so on. So these are basically all your accounting categories. Now this is a landscaping company, so you'll see some things that are relevant for landscaping companies. Of course, again, we have all our fixed assets, which we have trucks, then we also have our credit card accounts, then we have our account payable or liability accounts, equity accounts, and then our income accounts. So again, as a landscaping company, you might have landscaping services, job materials, labor, so on, okay? And then of course, you're gonna have your typical accounting expenses, advertising, automobile expenses, bank charges, commission fees, and so on. Now, one thing I love about QuickBooks is that your account is gonna come preloaded with a lot of your charter accounts already explained for typical accounting and bookkeeping expenses for a small business. So you don't have to worry about completing this as in depth as you see here, but if you know you have like, let's say a marketing agency and you're gonna have marketing agency income, then instead of saying landscaping services, of course you'll say like client services or something of that nature. So step one is go through your chart of accounts and go ahead and add any particular accounts that you need to add by clicking this add button, giving it an account name, and then selecting a particular category for that chart of account. 
Now, once you have your chart of account set up, which by the way, you can always go back and add more later, then the next step is gonna be connecting your business bank accounts. To connect a business bank account, you're gonna head over to bank transactions. Now, since this is a simple account, I've already connected a credit card account, a savings account, and a checking account. However, if you are trying to connect a new account as a new user, then you would click on this link account. And from here, it's going to allow you to link your business bank account online. So you would search for your business bank account and follow the instructions. Now, it's important to note that it is relevant to have a business bank account. Sometimes QuickBooks does not connect with personal accounts. So if you don't have a business bank account, then you may have to find another means to get your transactions loaded in here, which means that you can come here and click upload a file, which would typically be a CSV file of your bank statements. Um, of course, manage connections or order particular checks. All right, now once you have your business bank account connected, then you're able to see the transactions associated with your business bank account. It looks just like it would on your online bank account. It shows you the date, a description of the transaction, and it tries to go ahead and categorize um, what the expense may be along with how much you spent or how much you received. All right. And so it does this for all of your accounts, your checking, your savings, as well as your credit card account. Now, this is important because this is where the bookkeeping really starts. Okay, now that you have your chart of accounts and now that you have your bank accounts connected, you can start to actually do bookkeeping. And what is bookkeeping? We're gonna start categorizing transactions. So if I click on Bob's Burger, I have the ability to match the transaction, record it as a transfer or categorize it. And that's what I'm gonna select is categorize it. And then I have the ability to categorize this. So right now it's uncategorized, but let's assume Bob's Burger was meals and expenses. Um, it wasn't a product or service. I can add a memo if I would like to, but for the most part, I'll just click add. And then boom, if I go over to categorize, I can see I have now categorized this particular expense. And what that means is it's gonna show up on my financial statements, okay? We'll get to that later, but it's, this expense is now gonna show up on my profit and loss statement as an expense. And I could also, um, if it was an asset or a liability and I categorize it, it would show up, of course, on the balance sheet. All right, so as a business owner, what you're gonna do is go through and just start categorizing all these transactions, right? And so for Amazon, since this is a landscaping company, let's just say maybe this was some job supplies. So I'll search supplies and add that as an expense. If I knew what this vendor was, I would add the vendor here, but for the most part, I can click add and move on. So your first task is going ahead and just categorizing all these transactions. Now, as you begin categorizing transactions, QuickBooks starts to get smart and allows you to automate a lot, right? So if I go down here, I can see Norton Lumber and, all right, and QuickBooks have already determined that this might be lumber and building materials associated with a particular credit card account, all right? And so QuickBooks starts to try to match your particular transactions based on what it sees, all right? So I would come here again, this would likely be like job supplies. So we'll just go ahead and put in supplies and add that here. It's also important to note that you can add receipts to particular transactions. So if I were to go to categorize, I can go ahead and attach a statement, which would be a receipt. Now, I wanna show you where this gets cool. We can create a rule. What rules means is you can actually have the system automatically categorize things for you. So if I click a rule, I can name it. Let's say this is a, a car wash automobile expense. I can always categorize this particular expense as an automobile expense. So that way, instead of me having to go through every single time for those transactions, it's gonna automatically categorize any of those transactions. So as you can see, it now categorized both of these squeaky clean car expenses as a automobile expense. All right, and so the power of setting up rules is if you are a business owner and you have the same transactions over and over again, which typically we do, you can set up these rules so that your bookkeeping starts to become automated. And this is what I like to teach small business owners because when you go to a bookkeeper or an accounting firm, typically that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna set up these rules that happen again and again and again, and you may think they're working hard doing your bookkeeping every month, but really the system is doing all the bookkeeping for them and they just come to you and report the financial statements. All right, so if you are an accountant or you are a small business owner and you're tech savvy and you're number savvy, then setting up rules will allow you to automate a lot. All right, now once you have started to categorize transactions, the next step you're gonna to wanna to do is actually look at your sales receipts and invoices. 
All right, now that you have categorized all your expenses in the bank feed, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you handle any of your sales or your accounts receivables. So QuickBooks has a sales tab and here you're able to do a whole lot, right? You can set up customers, set up different products and services. You can provide estimates for clients. You can send invoices, recurring invoices to clients. You can send sales receipts and a lot more. Okay, so if you're uh, someone who likes to send invoices or you like to have things on accounts receivables, then you'll use the sales tab in order to get that set up. Additionally, you may have, let's say, bills. Okay, so maybe you work with a particular vendor and you want to do some accounts payable. So you will have the vendor send you an invoice, you'll enter your invoice and manually, you'll share whether or not the invoice has been paid or not. And so if you are trying to kind of manage your cash flow and you want to pay bills at a particular time, here is where you can add the bills and get that set up. All right, now from here, what you'll wanna do is once you categorize all your transactions, you've taken care of all your sales receipts, you're taking care of all your bills, then it's time to do what is called reconciliations. Okay, now your reconciliations is basically when you're matching your books, your accounting books, which is what we're doing here, with your bank statements. Okay, so whatever your bank statements beginning and end imbalances are, you want that to match up with your beginning and end imbalances on your bookkeeping as well. That makes sure that everything was completed and aligns perfectly. All right, so to get started with a reconciliation, of course you would click on get started. And then from here, you can kind of look at some of the prompts that walk you through what this is and how to do it. But again, what we're gonna do is we wanna match up the beginning balance with the ending balance. So we would take your bank account statement and we would put in whatever the ending balance is. In this case, let's just say it was 5,000. We'll enter in the ending uh, statement date. Let me go back in the past and then hit start reconciliations, okay? And now, of course, this isn't gonna be exactly right, but at the end of the day, what you wanna see is that the balance and the difference is zero, right? So we want our book balance and our bank account balance to be reconciled exactly right, which means that it all equals to zero. Now, if something is out of place, that's when you wanna come in and be like, oh, I accidentally maybe put in $86 instead of $87, and so you would come in and actually correct this particular transaction so that it aligns with your bank account. All right, let me bring the camera back on me for a second and drop a truth bomb on you. Okay, reconciliations can be extremely easy if you are a small business owner and you just have one, maybe two business bank accounts, then absolutely you can handle this yourself. Now, if you are a small business owner and you have three, four, five, six different accounts and you have different, uh, let's say, transactions happening outside of your business account, like uh, maybe you're getting a loan, maybe you're getting a mortgage, you're acquiring different assets, that's where reconciliations can really be troublesome. And so that is where you really get the value of hiring a bookkeeper or an accountant to do your own books for you because these experts can go in and absolutely handle it without you having to spend all your time as a small business owner trying to figure it out. So I just wanted to drop that truth bomb on you. Let's get back into uh, the reconciliations here. So again, what you're looking for is that everything balances to zero. That ensures that your bookkeeping is absolutely correct and up to date. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure your reconciliations are complete for the entire year. So that means each month is reconciled for each account. And then once it's reconciled completely, then you're able to generate financial statements like your profit and loss and your balance sheet for your actual tax preparation or tax planning needs. From there, what you can do to see your reports is go to this report tab and click on standard reports. Now there are a ton of different financial reports that you can pull from, but for the most part, you're gonna rely on the profit and loss statement for your financial income tracking. This is gonna show you all your income that you tracked as well as all your expenses and ultimately get down and show you what your net income or net profit was. And then same thing for your balance sheet. If we go over here, we can see all of our assets and liabilities entered in. So our bank account statuses, our account receivables, our assets, our liabilities. And at the end of the day, your total liabilities and equity should equal your total assets. Okay, that's the accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. Now, the last thing I wanna show you are going to be the payroll features because most small business owners are going to have contractors and people that they outsource to. So you can click on payroll and contractors. And in my sample account, I already have a contractor set up. But if I wanted to add a contractor, I would hit add contractor, put in contractor's name and contractor's email address. 
and then click add contractor. And what's going to happen is it is going to email the contractor to complete their profile. Now, what does that mean? It's going to send the contractor to a, a W-9, uh, which looks like this. Let's go ahead and pull up a W-9 form. It's gonna pull up a W-9, which looks like this, okay? And it's gonna request the contractor's name or entity, what the contractor is, their address, their city, as well as their identification number. And then it's gonna have them sign to confirm they are a contractor for you. And at the same time, if you do direct deposit, it's gonna ask for their bank account information so that you can send this contractor a direct deposit. Once you do that, you'll see the contractor listed here and then you're able to click on uh, their last payment or even pay the contractor a new payment, um, whether it's a paper check or a direct deposit, okay? Now, if you are an S corporation, then you must be paying yourself a reasonable W-2 salary or if you have employees that work for you, you tell them what to do, when to do it, how to do it, then you need to pay them a W-2 wage as well. Now, I can't show you what that looks like in my sample account, so let me switch over to one of my real live bookkeeping accounts. All right, now I am in one of my live bookkeeping accounts for one of my businesses. So of course these are real people and I'm gonna have to blur out some of the names, but I wanted to show you what this actually looks like. So right now I'm in the payroll employees section, which is where you will see all your W-2 employees. You'll see their names, their pay rate, their pay method, and their status, whether or not they're an active employee or you can switch to the inactive employees as well. Over here on the top right, you can see I have the option to run payroll now. You'll also see when the next payroll date is. If I wanted to send a bonus or commission only payment, I can do that here. Now, when you're setting this up as an S corporation paying yourself or for a W-2 employee you just hired, you would click on add employee. And then of course, put in the employee's name, their email and the hire date, because that's gonna determine the pay period they fall into. And then from there, you have the ability to let the employee onboard themselves, which would allow the system to send out the respective tax forms, allow them to set up the direct deposit information and some other details. I typically allow my employees to self onboard themselves. And then other features inside of QuickBooks are time tracking features. So if you wanna see what your employees are working on, you can do that here. Or if you want to track the expenses that they may have, you can do that as well. After that, you can add employee and then you would see them listed as a pending employee. And once they fill out the information, you'll see their status turn to active. All right, so that covers the basics of the payroll features inside of QuickBooks. Now, of course, this only applies to people who have team members or people who are an S Corp and must pay themselves a reasonable salary, as well as if you have W-2 employees. And again, I recommend the payroll plan and just get in the highest version so that QuickBooks takes care of all the payroll for you and you don't have to worry about any penalties that you may face with the state because there are state tax obligations as well as federal tax obligations associated with payroll taxes. All right, that's your quick rundown on how to set up your own bookkeeping. Now, of course, I didn't have time to go through every single detail and every single feature of QuickBooks, but this would allow you to basically get an account, get a system going, connect your chart of accounts, connect your business accounts, start to categorize your transactions, add in your invoices, add in your accounts payables, and then also reconcile and generate financial statements. Coming up next, what I wanna do is walk through why this is so important as a small business owner and walk you through exactly what taxes are required when you own a business.